Ma'am, I want to know. We have language problem. I want to know every inch of your body. The first time I was told that I'm overweight. One filmmaker wanted to see how my cleavage looks, and one filmmaker wanted to see how my thighs look. After Hate Story released, yeah. I almost for a couple of years uh, went into a, a sort of a depression. Most of the times when you have an actor making it big in the industry without any piggy backing, they have a different untold story to share. But most of the times, they remain untold. Today sharing her own journey is Surveen Chawla. Welcome Surveen. Hi Nan. How are you? Very good. Last time I met uh, you, you were anything but a mother. Now you, <laughs> now that has changed clearly. I'm everything and a mother. Yeah, now everything and a mother. <laughs> everything and a mother. <laughs> what are the things that you had to do? Do you remember your first audition? Uh, do you remember any of the auditions where you were mistreated or you were like uh, somebody was really rude to you? So honestly, I started like it was a piece of cake. I was extremely, extremely fortunate because I yeah. happened to audition for Balaji for Ekta, and I auditioned. I was. According to me, I would let me be harsh on myself. I thought I was pathetic, <laughs> but I don't know what she liked and what she saw in me, and that actually instilled a lot of confidence in me. This but was kahi to hoga. This no? was kahi to hoga, yeah. and uh, that audition. So she really loved. I don't know what she loved, but she really loved it, and uh, that was like a cakewalk audition for me. The real deal started after that. I think I. Sort of um, moved on and transitioned from yeah. television to, and then I wanted to try out South films and yeah. you know try that route. This is early 2000s. So this is 2004-5. No? Uh, no, when I transitioned, it was 2010. Yeah. So things have very rapidly changed over the yeah. last few years. Uh, in fact, the last three yeah. odd years, it's changed drastically. The first time I was told that I'm overweight, it came like a big blow to me. Like I'm. Overweight. First of all, you need to get your eyes checked because this was for a film. This was for a film. South. Yeah. I was also told that oh, you're way too exposed because you've done television. And where are we today? Yeah. You see the 180 degree shift in the mindset, but that wasn't the case then. So you're overexposed. So we can't give you this job. There was actually a time, and I was, a, you know, in hindsight, such a beautiful thing it is. Uh, one tends to think that uh, I might have to lie about my own work, about my own, you know, what do you call rosy roti? Yeah. In simple layman language, I'll have to lie about that. I mean, it's beyond comprehension why anybody would have to do that. So just because it, you are, you are yeah. from TV. Just because I was from television, I've actually had to do that, tell people. And then of course, then you know, there came a point when I said, you know what, why am I doing this? Because anybody can Google me and find out, you know. I would try to tell people that, no, 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 no. I have not done this for two years, I've done this only for a year. Mm. Try to minimize my experience in television, yeah. you know. People who've seen me, I can't lie to. And then it dawned upon me that, you know what, Sarveen, what are you doing? Then I started to blatantly say, yes, I'm from television and I've done this and I have so-and-so experience. and. I think it works because you know you won't have to waste time on yeah, on set telling me how to do my lines. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was a part of it. Then came the south. That was my biggest blow. Because there were three times when I had to face the casting couch down south. I was asked to accompany a director for a recce. For a film recce. And somehow, you know, my my sixth sense or my gut I kind of trust it yeah. and I kind of fall back upon it when I'm confused or when I don't know what's going on. And I was asked to come for a recce with him. I have no qualms in saying what I was told. Ma'am, I want to know, we have language problem. I want to know every inch of your body. What? Yeah. Uh, this is what I was told. I was told that and I, I couldn't believe my ears as to what I'm hearing. And um, uh, started avoiding calls and you know, every time that happened, it just happened like it was a big setback. Did you do this film? No, 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 no. I just stopped picking up yeah. calls. That was one. Then there was another experience where because of the language issue, um, so this again like a ridiculously big director, a national award winning director. 
I'm saying this on camera today. A national award-winning director comes up and tells me, so I had a very, very long, extensively long audition there from from it was almost a shift audition. Yeah. Seven a.m. to seven p.m. audition. Uh, various kinds of things I had to do, like a monologue or just uh, say something impromptu. Yeah. I did all that. I came back. I was a little unwell, and the director suddenly offers to come to Bombay to see me because I'm unwell, and I found it very like shady. I was like, why? <laughs> you know, I have friends. I can take care of myself. Thank you so much, but no, thank you. <laughs> and it so happened that uh, over that phone call only, he said, no, no, wait, ma, wait. So this wasn't the director actually, because the director could only speak in. Tamil could not speak or understand Hindi. Yeah. Could not speak or understand English. So there was mm. such a language barrier that there was. He had somebody like his right hand, or I don't know who, his friend speaking to me on behalf of him, knowingly, obviously, yeah. that you know, sir is saying this, yeah. and sir, he didn't. He didn't pose to be the director. So he said, you know, ma, um, there's such a language barrier, you know. Um, He needs to know you. He needs to understand you. If he has to work with you, this film is going to take very long to make, and um, you know it's going to be a long-term association. And then he suddenly jumped to just till the film, and I said, uh, "Sorry, sir." So I obviously I was clueless. So I very innocently asked, "Sir, just till the film? What? This is over the phone." Yeah. No, ma. You. He needs to know you, so just till the film, this will go on, and then you can stop. No, once work is over, I still remember my words. I think you're knocking on the wrong door. If Sir thinks I'm talented enough to work in his film, I'm still willing to do that, but I yeah. don't think I can barter myself for anything. So, you know, hard luck, but I'll have people to work with me. Not a problem, and that's that. And, and he, that film also didn't happen. And that film also didn't happen. I was going to do a, his directorial. And I was going to do another film that he was directing, uh, that he was acting in okay. as well. Because I've not faced anything here. That, which no, is, which no, is? No, no, no. I have. Here you faced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. So there are stories. There are quite a few stories. There are a couple of people actually that that happened, and that happened very recently, like last to last year. It happened. Even even now, it happened. And I had to barge out of an office because you know uh, uh, somebody trying to insinuate. An act, and I would never do that. I didn't do that when I was single. I didn't do that when I wasn't married. And I mean, there's no question about. Absolutely. So yeah, lines for me are very, very clear. Did it happen with a big filmmaker? Both big filmmakers. One filmmaker wanted to see how my cleavage looks, and one filmmaker wanted to see how my thighs look. It happens. This this happens. It's 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 real. It happens. Have they also been named in the Me Too? Yeah. I could, I could figure out. Like I told you, that Priyanka Chopra had said that you know there was a producer who once came and told her that you're an actress, you're mm. replaceable. Mm. Has that ever happened when you have pro been promised a role and you've been? So I was promised a film, not just a role, but I yeah. was promised a film, and the director, because of his pure indecisiveness, I think backed out. Uh, but the producer remains. I remain on very, very good terms with the producer, and the producer is a really, really, really dear friend of mine. The film happened. Oh, yeah, with the, the same director. The direct, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't do it, obviously, but the film happened. It released, and it did fairly well. I had done my readings, recies, measurements. Everything was done, you know. So days before the days film. Days before. Any so, point yeah. of time, did you feel dejected? After Hate Story released, yeah. I almost for a couple of years uh, went into a, a sort of a depression because th things did not pan out for me the way I would have wanted them to pan out, you know. So I was happy with. The fact with the fact that I did a film like that as my uh, debut, though yeah. I did Ugly before that. Yeah, But Ugly is released. a fantastic film. Yeah, Ugly is a fantastic film. Thank you. But because the track that I had in mind that I wanted to take sort of it didn't did not happen that mm. way. I feel what has happened by default is has been much better because I didn't care about a fat paycheck then and I don't care about it yeah. now. So initially, initial couple of years, 2014, 15, I was a little depressed because it hit me hard. You know, you yeah. sort of it's like a glass breaking moment, but it shatters and then pieces keep falling every now and then. Yeah. And then that phase sort of stretches and becomes longer and longer and longer. And for me that happened for 2 years after hate story. Yeah. Look at where you've come and I'm very happy and proud of the person that you are and there are so many times that these stories 
never get shared never get told you know and honestly then I, i have absolutely no idea why i'm so not hesitantly talking actually i wasn't ever hesitant talking about it it also depends on who you're speaking with how sweet <laughs> it's how sweet. because it's because you want to talk and you want to share yeah. your story with somebody who's as real as you've always yeah. wanted to be and i think that's that's the thank you for <laughs> thank you for that and thank you for sharing your story yeah. i hope it gives pleasure, more power pleasure, to people like you pleasure pleasure thank you hi i'm surveen chavla if you like this video Please like, share and subscribe to Pickfiller.